Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Julie. I'm a homeschooling mom of five. And through this summer, I am posting a lot of homeschooling style videos as we prepare for this next school year, which will be my ninth year homeschooling my kids. As most of you know, if you, if you follow me, if you watch a lot of my content, for our homeschooling curriculum, our main curriculum is the gather round homeschool curriculum. You might hear, I sent all my kids upstairs, well, so I could film this video, you might hear a bit of noise from them up in their room. I just heard something rolling across the floor. But the, our, Core curriculum is the gather round curriculum and I put our books together. So I'll just show you a sample of one of our school books. So I buy our curriculum digitally and then I print it up, put it together and just make a nice school book for my kids. So in today's video, I'm just gonna take you along. This is about, probably about a week process for me because I do have five units I'm going to print up. I print, laminate, assemble. It does take me a few days. So I'm gonna take you along probably vlog style and show you as I do this process of compiling these books. I just wanna show you the products I am using. So we have an Epson EcoTank 2760 that I love. It works so well for us, that's our printer. And then I have a laminator. You'll see me use these products in my step-by-step. -step. Uh, what I'll show you next. So this is my laminating machine. Again, it's used a lot. Well, well worth it. It's maybe $30. It's not, it's not pricey. I also have my binding system. This is a bit more pricey. I would definitely say still worth its while. It's super simple. It is pricey, but we use it a lot and I love how compact this is for storing. So this is really just a, it's not really a binding machine, it's more just a binding punch. But this is how I make the holes in my books. And then I also buy these coils or spines for keeping my books together. These are reusable, they are just click close. Uh, and then once we're done the school year, I take these off of our books and I use them again the next year. Some of course get damaged, but most of them I can keep and reuse. So those are the products I'm going to use. Let's go ahead and get started on putting our school books together. Today I am just starting my first step and picking out what unit I'm going to start printing up. So I'm just showing you here my computer screen. I have this folder called Gather Round Curriculum and then I have all of our uh, Gather Round units that I have purchased here. So um, I'm gonna start by doing Australia today. So when I click on Australia, you'll see I have all of the books saved. So as I have bought the units, I have downloaded them and then just saved them into this organized, organized folder here. I will start by doing the teacher's guide. So I'm just gonna open that up. So that is all open and loaded here. So now I'm going to go up to file and print. I am going to print, so it has the selection here. I do print it in like actual size. I am going to just print page one because I print on cardstock. And so I only wanna print the front page. My printer cannot print double-sided on cardstock. Maybe some printers can, but mine cannot flip the paper when it's cardstock. So I, f I print cardstock on both front and back cover. The cardstock I use is 80 pound paper. And then for the interior of my book, I use 28 pound paper. So if you go to the store and just buy basic white printing paper, it is 20 pound paper. You can also buy 24 pound paper, 28, 32. You can play with it and figure out what works best for you. Because if I was just printing up a book maybe to read, 20 pound paper might work okay. These books that I'm printing are workbooks. The printers, or the, the teacher's guide I guess I'm printing is not a workbook, but for my kids, the books I print for them, they're workbooks and so they're writing and they're drawing and so I find 28 pound paper to be a good, thickness for their workbooks. So here's my printer, it's on and it's ready. It is the Epson EcoTank 
2760. So here's where I have my paper. I want to get this. I want to get like some other holder for my paper, but for right now it's just in the little packages. So this is my 28 pound paper. I am just going to fill my printer there so it's ready. Um, it is this brand. I just get it off of Amazon, the 28 pound paper. And then down here I have my 80 pound paper. So I am just going to pick out two of these. So I am ready for both front page and back page. I'll put my back page there because I don't need that for a little while. I'll put my front page here and then I am ready to print that front cover. Now I'm going back here to print again. So this time I'm just gonna look at how many pages it says. So it says one to 170, that's a big book. So I am just gonna skip, so I'm gonna skip page two. That's just what's supposed to be on the back of the front cover, so I'm not gonna bother doing that. I'm gonna start at page three, and then I'm only going to go to page 168 because I don't wanna print the back cover yet. So, just gonna kind of scroll to the back here, see what one page 168 is. It's a blank page. Okay, so I'm just going to do this. I'm gonna make sure, make sure that I have it set to print on both sides of the paper. It wasn't even checked. So make sure that it's printing on both sides. I'm gonna to have to go back and check at some point while it's printing to make sure that um, I'm not running out of paper but I'm gonna print, I'm just gonna leave this for a while now, it'll take a while for three to 168 to print. The interior of my book is done. So I'm back on here. I am just gonna print up that back cover. I have my cardstock in the printer. Again, I'm not gonna worry about doing that second to last page. I am just going to print up that last page. Here's one book completed. I just have laying out here. So front cover, here is the entire middle of the book. Look how well this printer does though, printing in full color, really nice vibrant colors and just beautiful books. So I'm just going to leave this book right here and now I've got to start printing out my next book. That was my teacher's guide that I completed printing but I have four kids that are in school that I'm also teaching and so I need to print up each of their workbooks. So my two oldest use the upper elementary books my third child uses the early elementary and then my fourth uses the early reader books. So I'm gonna be back and forth to the computer all day today, just printing up their books as well, doing cardstock for the front cover and the back cover and printing the interior of their books. And I get all that printed before I start the rest of the assembly process. Today I am going to complete our books, at least this unit. I have to print up some more units. I do one unit at a time. But these five books I have lined up, I am going to assemble those today. This is how I like to do it. I just have them all lined up here by the back door. They're all printed. And then I have these laminating sheets. Actually, before I get any further, I need to turn my laminator on. So I'm gonna turn it on and then I'm gonna turn it to five. That is what setting I like to use when I am laminating something thick like cardstock. For the laminating sheets, I have, from what I have experienced, the quality in the sheets doesn't really differ from brand to brand. So I just buy an Amazon brand of these laminating sheets and then I'm going to put one sheet over each of my back covers and front covers and then when my laminator here down on the floor has warmed up, then I will run each of those sheets through the laminator. So I'm gonna take each of these covers, one side just opens. Where's the side that opens? It's this side. I'm gonna open that up and I am just going to stick my front cover in there. I push it in and stick it up as far as I can, leaving about equal equal um, amount excess on either side. So I pushed it, I don't know how well you can see that, but it's right up to the top. 
a little bit of excess around all the three sides. I do, I'll show you, but I do trim the sides after as well. So there's the front cover and then here's the back cover. The laminator does take a few minutes to warm up, but as soon as it's warm, I will start sticking these through as I prep the rest of the front and back covers. The blue light is on, so that means that it's all warmed up. So you wanna take your sheet, you wanna put the sealed side, so this is the open side where I pushed it in. You wanna put the sealed side down first. You just kind of start sliding it in and then the laminator catches hold of it and takes it through and when it comes through, it will be laminated. One thing I'm sometimes not great at, okay, <laughs> there's another thing I'm sometimes not great at. I didn't center it great, you can see that. Um, sometimes that might mean there's a little curled edge, but this one shouldn't be too bad. Another thing I was gonna say I'm not always great at is making sure to get all the dust or like crumbs off of, off of the paper before I put the laminating sheet on. Like it shouldn't be too bad, but there's occasionally just like a little, a little piece of dust or something that gets laminated into the sheet. So if you want it to look perfect, you can make sure that your paper is dusted off as well. But that's just coming through. This is a really simple, easy laminating system. And then it just falls out and there we go. It's all, it's all sealed. I almost always forget to write the kids' names before I laminate it, so if you want to write your child's name before you laminate, you can use a pen, but I often do it after like this, and then I just have to use a Sharpie to write their name, and that's totally fine, but they are all laminated. Now the next thing I do is, because when you laminate, the laminating sheet is a bit bigger than an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper, I don't want my back and front covers to be way bigger than the interior of the book, so I just take scissors and I cut off excess. Let me put this camera up and I'll show you how I do it. Okay, so I take my sheet here. Because I have put it so close to the top, I don't have to cut off anything at the top. I wanna keep some curved edges, so I am just going to cut. I try to cut straight, it's not perfect. My front and back covers definitely aren't perfectly straight lines, but that's okay, I just don't want my covers to be extra big. So I take a curved corner there, cut all along the bottom side. I do another curved corner on this side, and then trim, whoops, trim this last side. So there is one done. My lines are, I don't know, pretty good. And it's just a smaller, a smaller page now. I don't have all of that excess plastic. Everything is just all trimmed up now and ready to be punched. So here again is my binding punch. When I am punching holes in the cardstock, I just do one at a time. And then as I go through these pages, I will do three or four, no more than four pages at a time, or it just is, is too tight. So it does take a little bit of time to run through, you know, a whole stack of... <laughs> Got it, however many pages this is, but you kind of get into a system and it does move along pretty quickly. So first, I just wanna make sure my pages are all in the correct order, just like that, nothing is upside down. And then, I'll show you how my system works. The tripod's maybe a little bit in the way of how I would usually do this, but then we will start by punching the holes. So you wanna line your page up, make sure it goes all the way in. I have made mistakes before of not putting it all the way in and then the holes kind of go off the page and I have to totally redo it. So make sure it's all the way in and whether you wanna put it up near the top or up near the bottom, just make sure each of your pages that you line them up the same way. So it's in all the way and then I just run my punch down like that and I've got my holes there. And so I just put it upside down and put it there. And then once you get into that system, you can just keep running them through nice and quick. This is my last page of the main part of the book. And as you can see, um, this punch can slide either down or up. And then again, I will do that last page of cardstock all on its own. And there is one book, all the holes punched. Now I've just got four more to go back there. For the spines, as far as I know, 
they sell three different sizes so the one I want to say it's 3 eighths of an inch and it has a 45 sheet capacity the next one has 85 sheet capacity and then these ones that I buy have the 110 sheet capacity I have bought the medium sized ones before but then I bought a big big pack of these ones because they do hold a lot of sheets so for the teacher's guide I like to use this one and then even for the other books I find that the pages can turn better when it has some extra space so these large I want to say they're like three-fifths of an inch are the ones that I use I'm just gonna show you how I bind these now. This is the last step. This is something that I have a little trick that I learned before I even made my first book. And that is that you want to, when you put them on your spines, you wanna put the back page first and I will show you why in a second. So I've got that one on and then I'm going to put my front cover on and then the rest of them should go on pretty easily. I'll divide it in half just to make it a little bit easier on myself, but I'm gonna slide those ones on. Actually, I'm gonna divide that again. It just goes on a little bit easier if you don't have too many pages. <laughs> I told the kids to be quiet. I don't know if you can hear Wesley's very loudly whispering, talking to me. What is it, Wesley? You're hungry for a snack? I'm gonna get you a snack in just a minute, okay? And so then I'm gonna put my last few pages on here. And once that's on, then I can just click all of those spines closed. And so now I'm gonna close my book. And so it just turns very smoothly. The spine works so well. But I wanna just quickly show you, <laughs> careful, the, the spine here is right before the back page. So no pages can turn like over that back spine. It is a part of the spine that just doesn't look quite as nice either. And so I prefer it just before that back page rather than that spine being like right in the middle, right in the middle here. One more quick look at the books. I added their names and they're good to go. One unit down, now I have to make I have to print up four more units for next school year, some writing curriculum, more stuff to do, but there's a start. Thanks for coming along and watching this process. I hope that that was informative and helpful for you. If you are just getting started homeschooling or if you wanna be putting together some homeschooling curriculum for the first time, or if you just wanna to put together some books and you wanted to see how these products worked, I hope that was helpful. I will make sure to link each of the products I use down below in the description box. And thanks for watching. I will see you guys next time. Make sure you subscribe if you wanna see more homeschooling content. Bye-bye.